ESPN. Jeremy, what's going on today? Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. Well, of course, we've been uh, reading today from your latest, uh, along with Don Van Nata and Seth Wickersham, uh, how Patriots legend Bill Belichick is now out of a job. Uh, you guys portrayed it as him being voted off the island. Uh, do you think he's ever going to work in the NFL again? There's a source quoted in there that thinks the one destination could be Dallas. Do you see him coaching there or anywhere else ever again? Well, the, the people I've spoken to and people sort of in that coaching circle and industry do believe that he'll at least get a hard look or two multiple interviews, at least one interview. And, you know, look, maybe he'll age well, right? He's coming off a year where he's in the shadows. He can sort of you know, rebuild his image a little bit by making appearances like he had today in the Pat McAfee show. He has been going to colleges like Washington, Nebraska, um, you know, just to kind of breathe away from the game for a little bit. You know, people who are close to him that I've talked to believe that he'll be rejuvenated and uh, ready to go and maybe even a more attractive candidate next year. So, But not everybody sold on that. You know, that there's a feeling that you know, the Patriot way and, and that formula might be a little challenged and, and damaged a little bit. Plus, you have owners that clearly in this cycle uh, valued collaboration, people that can work with a general manager that are you know probably on the younger side, up and coming coordinators, things like that, or people like Raheem Morris who had a lot of backing from people around the league as a good collaborator. Um, even though it sounds like Bill was, was willing to do that, in a new job um you know the feeling is that others are maybe more equipped for that style jeremy thanks for joining us i'm wondering in the people that you and your colleagues spoke to did you feel like there was more weight against bill getting these jobs and in particular the atlanta job more weight given to the sense of control that he would take over everything in the operation or was it more about the recent performances of the New England teams since Brady's exit? Oop, did we lose him? Did Jeremy drop? Jeremy, hello. Oh, Jeremy, hey, one, sorry, guys. one, two, three. Oh, you're oh, there. there. You okay, is. <laughs> sorry about that. I, I would say it's probably a little bit of both. Uh, yeah, as one source told me, the, uh, the peeps, some people in Atlanta had more of a problem – with Bill working there than Bill would have had working there in, in terms of the collaboration part, you know, like he made clear that he's willing to work with GM Terry Fontenot, that he probably would have liked the extra help and the relief that maybe he didn't always have in new England where he kind of had to do everything. And in this scenario, he could just coach. Um, but it's with based on his style. And if, if teams feel like he's set in his ways, then that's easier to say than maybe to do long term. There was a feeling that if he got in the building, it might uh, re- kind of revert to the way it was. And so there's that factor. And, you know, the age is a big part of it. You know, if he was in his early 60s, maybe this would be uh, a lot different. And so, that you know, there, there's several factors that come into play. Jeremy, the, uh, the key part of this, I think, that's gotten a lot of people upset around here is the uh, Robert Kraft aspect of it and the call that he made to Arthur Blank. Based on your reporting, because it seems like there was some resistance to retiring Bill there within those walls anyway, outside of blank. Based on your reporting, in your opinion, if Kraft hadn't made that phone call, do you think Bill would have gotten the job? Probably not. I, I still think that there were enough people. can't say for sure, but I think there were enough people uh, in the Atlanta circle that had uh, other favorites, you know, because they, they essentially did take sort of a straw poll. And, you know, people had a lot of Raheem Morris, number one, and a lot of Mike McDonald, who's now the Seattle coach, and a lot of Bobby Slowick, you know. Um, Other guys like Anthony Weaver, who's now the Dolphins defensive coordinator, made a good impression, Brian Callahan, before he got the Titans job. So they they interviewed a lot of people, and several were were heavily in the mix and and highly regarded. So I do do sense in our reporting that the uh, coming off of the yacht meeting that he had with Arthur Blank, that first interview, that there was some momentum and that he really had a realistic chance at it. Something changed. I think what loomed large in those changes is that the the powers that be in Atlanta, um, the people in the front office, you just wanted to go in a different direction. Talking to Jeremy Fowler, ESPN. He's one of the co-authors of Inside Bill Belichick's uh, Failed Job Hunt. He was voted off the island. He co-authored it with Don Van Nata and Seth Wickersham. We've been talking about it all day here on ESPN. Uh, one story we haven't gotten to of yours that we planned on discussing more today, but then this, uh, this story kind of trumped it, Jeremy, uh, is you stacked uh, via scouts that you talked to throughout the league. You stacked 
11 different quarterbacks. And we're really interested in some of these quarterbacks at the top, uh, from Caleb Williams really down yeah. to Bo Nix. What did you learn through that experience about these top quarterbacks and a potential fit in New England? Yeah, so you know, I got the chance to, to poll nearly two dozen people around the league and coaches, scouts, and execs. And these, you know, the feeling is things probably shook out like I thought. Not a lot of major surprises. Uh, J.J. McCarthy was really right there as like a fringe tier two, but kind of tier three guy. Like he's he's sort of number three and a half in the pecking order. Um, most, you know, a lot of teams I talked to, and and I think New England. I believe is probably in this boat that they have Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels, Drake May, JJ McCarthy in that order. Um, so, which, you know, probably makes it pretty easy to telegraph the top, but you know, we'll see it's the draft and there could always be wrinkles and smoke screens. But that's sort of the feeling around the league and probably how things will shake out. It just depends on where McCarthy goes, but uh, you know, Michael Penix and Bo Nix are two quarterbacks that are a preference, you know, like they're, they're probably neck and neck for that fifth quarterback spot. Jeremy, going back to the article from today, um, uh, Jonathan Kraft has been featured in a couple of Seth's reporting, uh, I guess, reports since the season ended. And he was featured close to the top of this report that you guys had together. I'm wondering, do you get a sense from speaking to people around the Patriots and around the league how much of a role Jonathan is playing in day-to-day operations with the front office and ownership? Well, I, I can't say for sure the total extent, but you know, it's been known that he's you know a major figure there, and and uh, you know, has been pretty hands on for a while. Is is the feeling at least league wide, and uh, you know certainly Gerard Mayo being a new coach, bringing some new energy. Um, you know there there is a a feeling there of a new vibe, which um, I'm trying to think of a, a better phrase for it. It sounds kind of cheesy, but I, I have heard that that there's it, it feels like there are fresh ideas being kicked around there. In New England, you know, you have Elliot Wolf and Gerard Mayo and, and everybody else, you know, and Elliot's got his people that he's brought in. Gerard Mayo's got his staff members that can kind of follow through with his vision. And so um, you have a little bit of new life there after, you know, things have gotten dormant. So uh, I'm, I'm sure Jonathan's involved in that to some extent, but it does feel like from a draft standpoint that it's Elliot's and Gerard's show. One more before we let you go. You mentioned you believe the Patriots have the quarterback stacked. Williams, Daniels, May, McCarthy. I, I have surmised, and I'm I'm curious your thoughts on this. I've surmised that, you know, at least for the Patriots, the idea of a trade back or even McCarthy is a bit of a smokescreen. H- how realistic is the idea the Patriots could trade back and target one of the quarterbacks outside the top three? Well, I'll say this, and this isn't necessarily specific to New England, but I would say that, the McCarthy hype does feel pretty real. I, I know some teams wonder if this is a Will Levis situation where he's getting pumped up as a top five pick and then all of a sudden goes in the second round, but I don't think so based on the big season he had, the pedigree. Um, you know, he's a, he's a bigger athlete and, and with higher level traits than given credit for. Like, they're just – teams seem to be high on him. I've had the three different execs who think he'll go top six. So, um, if you're – even Washington, to an extent, I don't think they'll do this necessarily, but if you're like, hey, I really like J.J. McCarthy, and I do think they like him, do you try to move back from two to six or something, you know, and take him there? I, I, I'm just it's kind of – that's. I think those conversations are going on because he is well-liked enough. Now, you know, at the end of the day, will he go later in the top ten? Maybe. But, you know, it really depends on, on where you sit. I, I don't get the sense New England's looking to move out right now. Certainly they would have that conversation, I imagine, and that will heat up over the next week or so. Um, but most teams I talk to expect that they'll sit put, take a quarterback at three, knowing that you, you have Jacoby Percet, can play some games for you or even play the whole year if you need. That would probably be a good scenario for a guy like Drake May who can sit for a year and learn. Uh, and then they can it's not build a great scenario for us, them. Jeremy. I got to tell you, that's not great for <laughs> yeah, a daily talk show. I don't know if we like that. I don't want to watch a whole Euro Brissette, but I hear uh, I hear what you're saying. But okay, uh, so yeah, no, I, I know look, it might I, not be sexy, but you know, yeah, no, least, it's definitely not. They would have a veteran that can play. That, that's my point. No, fair enough. Uh, he's Jeremy Fowler. You can check out all of his work. He's a co-author of the latest on Bill Belichick. Uh, and what Robert Kraft had to say to Arthur Blank. We've been talking about that all day, up now at ESPN. You can also check out his article, uh, Tearing Off Quarterbacks, after his conversations with scouts and decision makers around the league. You can follow him on Twitter at JFowlerESPN. Jeremy, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy Fowler is all our guest. Joins us on the Harbor One Hotline. So, a couple of items there. Jonathan Kraft, more hands-on day-to-day. Number two, he probably wouldn't have gotten the job in Atlanta, regardless of what Robert Kraft had to say, despite attempting to prevent Bill from getting that job, which to me is the real story. Uh, He also says the Patriots have the quarterbacks. He thinks Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, and from who he's talked to, he doesn't see the Patriots trading out of pick number three. He expects them to stick and pick and maybe, unfortunately, play Jacoby Brissett 